Hey, I'd like to thank administration for having me here today and to present in this institution. Thank you for having me here. But most of all, I would like to thank you for coming down here and being present for this event. I know that it is not a, manda a mandate for you to be here, so I appreciate you for being here. I do not take it for granted. We will squeeze every second of, 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 of this day that we have together, and we will grow today. So with that being said, my name is Carlos Christian, president and founder of the Starts Within organization. What we do is we work with individuals who are currently incarcerated for 52 weeks, and we also work with that same group of individuals for 52 weeks after they get released as well. Going into the schools as well, I am slated to go into an at-risk school in Columbus, Ohio at the end of this month to just get them brothers the information. That means that when I was young, I didn't have that information, so I want to be able to be in a position to get them brothers the information. We have just implemented a full day workshop in Franklin Medical Center. That was the first of its kind, where everybody inside of the workshop got a copy of the book Prison Without Bars, and we covered a couple of different topics to be able to lean on the mentality that gets people incarcerated. That's our main focus. It starts within, it starts within yourself, and it starts within your current situation. And these are the keys to be able to be successful outside of here. Men, I'm creating a lot of work, is what I'm trying to tell y'all. The way that we are going to build the Starts Within organization up is from within. That means that I need brothers to come home and fill these positions to be able to lean on the mentality. Why? Because people from the hood and people from these adverse conditions will listen to you versus listening to somebody who has been working to get in these positions. So who do you get the information from? The people that you can relate to. It cannot be a transference of information if it is no relationship established. The reason why I'm able to transfer information from brothers, the reason why I can transfer information to brothers, 13 years old, I got, I, I got involved into the streets. My environment had told me that selling drugs was my best way to be able to become successful. So I started to sell drugs at the age of 13. I got hit at 19 years old with a 10 year prison sentence for attempted murder, possession of drugs, drug trafficking, possession of firearms. I really thought that the way that I was going was the way for me to be able to become successful. What I found out when I was inside a Marion Correctional Institution was that this was not the way that I should be going. I had a three month old son when I got incarcerated. I said that I need to do something to redesign myself and that's what I did. So by 29 years old in 2007, I was released from Marion Correctional Institution. I've been home since 2007, men. Do you understand what that means? That's 10 years, brothers. Goodbye in the eyes. That's 10 years. I could just stop talking from right here, all right? <laughs> Define the odds. What I've been able to accomplish in that 10 year period since I've been home. I've been running Starts Within Organization for the last six years. I started it in 2011. That means that I was working in a warehouse on a third shift job, picking cases and things while I was building the Starts Within Organization. In 2014, I went in and I told my boss, you are fired. <laughs> I've been doing this for full time ever since 2014. I'm two and a half years off the clock. No traditional clock for me. I said, you are fired. And I said, I'm going into my assignment. And this is what I do for a living now. I come in and I give brothers the information that they need so then their thinking can change and then their behavior can change and then we can turn the penitentiary on its head and stand the community on its feet. I'm on assignment. That's right. Right, 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 right. This is what it's about, man. I've been able to see my son graduate. I came home, I got released from prison. His mom said, go ahead and raise our son to be a man because I trust you with the development of you, so I trust you with the development of our son. She signed custody of my son over to me, and I was able to raise my son. At 18 years old, my son graduated from Westerville South. He went on to Columbus State Community College for business management. He didn't stay in there, but at least he went. He's doing something else different now, working and doing things like that. But one thing that he is not doing, he is not selling. Dope. He's not emulating the man that I was, he's emulating the man that I am. And that's the difference, maker. <laughs> See, because statistically speaking, he should be in 
incarcerated himself. Anybody who has a father or a parent of it, of, 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 who was incarcerated, that child is more than likely to be incarcerated themselves. But statistically speaking, we defy the odds. I'm supposed to be back in prison. Defying the odds. Ten years home, man. I've been able to go to a couple of vacations. I've been able to, to, to watch the Cavs games. We was down there in the one point something million in that atmosphere and just be all in the middle of that. Me and my son, I got two other children. I got an eight year old son and I also got a one year old daughter now too right. as well. Right. I got paperwork on all of them too. Shared parenting. I don't play about my children. Wow, I'm able to watch them grow for my 10 years. I've been home, I've been able to watch them grow. I've been able to watch the Cavs games. I've been able to watch the Browns games. I've been able to eat Jello with the fruit. <laughs> yeah! That's what it is, and I'm appreciative than a mother. When I eat my Jello and I make it myself, I ain't got to sit there and wait at the trash can for people who think that it's pork and jello. I'm like, man, brother, hey, I you can't eat that jello because it's pork in there, man. Let me get that jello, brother. I ain't got to do that no more. I just make my jello. I ain't got to sit at the trash can and catch, man, catch brothers before they going away. I'm loading up on the jello. Ah, you know it's pork in that jello, huh? <laughs> Powerful things, man. Powerful things. I'm just excited to be here, man. I'm excited to be here, man. Just good stuff for me, man. 2013 is when I first started these, these presentations for Black History Month. And, and one thing about history, what history is meant to do, it's meant to inspire and motivate you. That means that when you look at what other people have been through and they was able to become successful after going through that, that should add to your your, your, your confidence about you being able to go through what you are currently are going through and be able to come out victorious as well. Because if that person is a person just like you and they were able to overcome it, then you can overcome it as well. And this is the purpose of history. We are supposed to use it for inspiration in our present time so our future can be great. See, the reason why we live lower level living is because we are not motivated in our present day and time. Well, this is the reason for history is to go back and see how they were able to do it and see what they were able to overcome and then be confident in we being able to overcome what we are currently going through as well. For instance, if I'm sitting up here and I'm trying to push this like this and it ain't moving, come up here and try to push it for me real quick. And I'm just like, man, that thing ain't moving. Wow. Now I'm looking at it in a whole different way. Now I'm like, man, I just seen that brother budget, man. Dang, let me go ahead and get busy, right? Because now my mind is working in a different way because now I've seen you be able to do it. Now my mind is, is, is having the understanding that it can be done. So now when I go at it, I'm going at it in a whole different way because now I know that it can be done. That's the difference maker. That's what history is able to do. If I can tell you, man, I've been able to overcome this and I've been able to overcome that, and I'm out here victorious where people are seeing the value in me, then it's like you can look at that too and say, man, I'm able to become victorious as well. He's no greater human being than I am. I'm not extraterrestrial. Right. It's where people are seeing the value in me, then it's like you can look at that too and say, man, I'm able to become victorious as well. He's no greater human being than I am. I'm not extraterrestrial. I'm just a human being. I got organs in my body just like you got organs in your body. The greatest resource is within yourself. It's not outside of you. The greatest resource is within yourself. That's what I understood. I had to tap into the greatest resource, which is within myself. History. That's right. So over these years, I've covered a couple of different people. I've covered Frederick Douglass, you know, the things that he was able to get accomplished. I've covered Malcolm X, education of the passport to the future. I've covered the Black Wall Street. 
what they were able to get done in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the early 1900s, able to establish those businesses. They had their own hospitals. They had their own doctors. They had their own airports. They had their own airplanes. They had their own grocery stores. They had their own law firms, their own lawyers in the black community. They used to call it the, 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 the 